Welcome, folks, to day day two of the Other Israel Film Festival. My name is Isaac Zablocki. I am uh, the director of the film festival, and I'm sitting next to the founder of the Other Israel Film Festival, Carol Zabar, who is looking up our moderator's last name to get the full history. It comes of... from the Polish term inner tavern. <laughs> And it was supposed to be people who had inns or taverns. We'll learn more about this throughout the conversation. Um, we're really excited about the conversation um, for Crossings. Um, Carol and I actually saw this film at the Haifa Film Festival um, over a year ago and um, uh, thought it was extremely thought provoking and could lend a real new angle to other Israel. And we're really excited to be able to present uh, this conversation here today. Of course, for those of you new to other Israel, we are, um, uh, we were having the conversations at certain times, but you can watch the movies all week. So join us for all the movies coming up on the conversation um, and in our conversation schedule. Um, next up at uh, 5 p.m., we have a cooking class with Gazala, uh, Drew's cooking class. Um, you don't wanna miss that. And then at 6 p.m., um, we are hosting a conversation with the filmmakers of My Dearest Enemy. And um, tomorrow, a full day starting with short films and ending with Till Kingdom Come. Join us for all these conversations. Be a part of the conversation. Um, our moderators will start off with a few questions, but then you could place your questions in the chat. And uh, those of you who share respectful questions, we will call on you and open your mics and make you a part of the conversation, but please do keep it respectful. At the very end, we also want our, our community to be able to talk to one another and share their opinions. So, uh, and everybody has different opinions. So once again, respectfully, um, we're gonna break into breakout sessions um, for just five minutes um, to allow people to talk about the film and share a little bit of um, their, their perspectives on things, uh, things that might not have been said in the conversation. Um, I wanna thank our partners, um, of course, Amenu, One Voice, and True Us specifically for this film, but all of our partners who do the work on the ground, check them all out on our partner page. Um, most importantly, our, our really establishing partner and um, who have really taken a lead every year, but even more so this year, the New Israel Fund, and they'll be leading this conversation um, we have here Itamar Wigador, who we've learned so much about his name already. He's the National Program Director for the New Israel Fund, Fund and he's going to be in conversation with the director Itzik Lerner, who is a veteran of the Other Israel Film Festival, um, as well as a special guest. You'll recognize her from the film, Rotem Shaked. Um, Itamar, I'm going to hand things over to you. Thank you, Izzy. Um, it's such a pleasure to be with all of you here. Um, I could see some familiar faces. Hi, Shula. Hi, Jen. Um, it's really, really wonderful to be here. Um, I want to thank Itzik and Rotem for joining us. Um, I know it's late in, in, in Israel, so, so it's really uh, thank you for staying up on, on a Friday evening. Shabbat Shalom. Um, I just want to say on a personal note that I'm a big film enthusiast, and uh, one of my favorite kind of parts of my work at the New Israel Fund is this ongoing collaboration with the Other Israel Film Festival. So it's really such a pleasure and, and, and so much fun. Um, and without further ado, I think we should just kind of jump into the conversation, if that's okay with, with everybody. Um, and I'll start with you, Itzig. And, and I want to ask, um, I think that the, the question that is on, on all of our minds, and that is, how did you get such um, intimate access to, to the soldiers from boot camp to deployment? And maybe more broadly, I'll, I'll tack it on, um, what, what, make, what made you make this film? So Itzik, yes, we'll start with you. I, I will start from your last uh, question. And uh, I, I got the evidence that uh, uh, every year, two million people, two million Palestinian people cross a crossing in Israel. There are, uh, there are a few crossing, Allenby, which is very famous, and that's the, to Jordan, and Erez checkpoint to Gaza. And at the beginning, I thought I will start with uh, four checkpoints, uh, Allenby, uh, Erez uh, checkpoint, and two in the, in the West Bank. 
but uh, it, it, it wasn't going because the army didn't let me and also um, the bureaucratic around me uh, didn't uh, let me to do it. And then uh, I deal with the army, which is uh, uh, not easy, let's say. Uh, but in the end, they, they let me to go in and the big and the main problem is uh, to take soldiers from the practice to be with them four months and then in the same soldiers to go to the checkpoint but uh, but I, I i decide to go to the uh, two checkpoints well the biggest one of them is the biggest in the middle east kalandia which is um, is a is a I've been in Mexico and I saw with uh, some some checkpoint. Uh, we can't compare it, but uh, but still, Kalandia is uh, uh, you know uh, all the times they are uh, 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 terrorist attacks. Yeah, uh, at, uh, very, can. and and uh, and then after four months, I go with them uh, for uh, let's say uh, seven, eight months with them to be with them in the checkpoint. But uh, the idea is to go with the same characters from the, the first day in the army, from the first day when they, when they go down from the bus uh, in, the, in, the, in the Negev base, and then to go with them far away a year, which is, I, I, didn't, I didn't thought that I will take it so far, but I can't stop it. Uh, actually, I'm lucky because uh, Channel 11 in Israel, which is uh, just start to be a new, uh, a new net. So uh, they let me to do three parts. It was a, a mini Syria, three parts of mini Syria. And I thought another thing that I want to give the checkpoint in Israel, not from the Palestinian side, because always we saw how the Palestinians is suffer, which is which is, you know, in uh, in the uh, I, I it's hurt and I'm uh, kavod. I mean, but with all I the thought, respect. Yes, thank you. And I, I thought the the Israeli soldiers, this is the um, um, this side, they also suffer and they suffer a lot. They are only 18 years old, which is, which is nothing, you know, and they stay eight hours, 10 hours in the, in the shelter and, uh, and, and they have to do in, in the summer, in the winter, in a, in a very press, in the holidays, in the Ramadan, in all these days make a lot of, uh, of stress. So I thought I have to be there to give them the side to see how they suffer, how uh, young Israeli soldiers, let's say Jewish soldiers, um, there are a few Druzen, but um, most of them, uh, all of them are Jewish. And, and uh, you know, the Israeli government say we need the, the, the checkpoint, we need that, but in the end, who, who make the job and did it? is the Israeli soldier. And, and for me to do this uh, job, to give this side, it's a different. I think uh, no filmmakers in Israel um, will go and give the, this side. So I thought, and I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle, I'm not in the left, I'm not in the right. I think I want peace and all, all these things. My opinion is to go uh, in the middle. I want peace. Uh, my, I have uh, two, uh, three children uh, who are served the army. Mo all of them uh, made the, 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 the hard army. And uh, for me to go for this side, which is, uh, you know, I did it with all my heart. What the other question? Oh, that's enough. <laughs> that, that's a great start. And you all already started to answer my second question. But um, I was asking, how did you get access? Like technically, uh, yeah, who, yeah. like... It's also in this film and also in Megiddo, your previous film, you also had amazing access to a high security prison. So I'm wondering if this is, this is like a gift you have, gaining really, really unique access to these, to these places. I think uh, 
without access in no in any film of my film, you can't do nothing. It's better that you will stay at home and make a Zoom conversation and uh, you know, even now in Israel, when, when we, we are not able to go around whenever you, we want, I'm still, I'm still uh, shooting my film because I believe that that's the way to be in touch. That's the way to go, you know, eye to eye. That's the way to be, you know, I give them patik and I give them, uh, and I, uh, you know, after I, I, I always said when, after I shoot, I finish to shoot and go them and drink coffee, you know, the, the small talk before and after the shooting is, 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 uh, one, is, is my system. But don't tell nobody because uh, that's my experience. <laughs> no, stop. Anyway, so uh, I, I, the access is to go psychologic and to be, to be, to love them, to give them the empathy. They, I, I, I just saw that the uh, soldiers were coming in the first day, you have to be there and, and to go slowly, slowly and to, to give them all the patience. And uh, Rotem can say about it, you know me from the first day. Yes. <laughs> and the phone call that she gave to her mother and the second day, <laughs> where is your mother, Rotem? <laughs> well, Rotem, I would love to, um, to ask you and, and really thank you for, you know, in the film, it's, it's really moving to see you speak so candidly and so like beautifully about yourself and being so honest. And um, you definitely, for me, I didn't even know that you're going to be the person like, joining us on this call, but you're definitely the protagonist that kind of was, was I was left with um, in, in a very powerful way. And so I would love to hear from you, Rotem, um, how is your experience of, of seeing yourself in the film? Wow. And, and what do you think, it's, a, it's also a hard question maybe, um, what do you think you learned from it about yourself, about the world, about the situation in Israel? And it's a really broad question, so, so please. Okay, uh, so uh, your first question is the hardest one. I wasn't expecting that. Um, seeing myself in the movie, let me tell you something. This is one of the hardest things I had to do. You know, like uh, it's watching yourself in one of the roughest times you can ever go through. I can tell you a secret. I've never seen the movie at its fullest, never. I can't. Uh, I literally can't because, not because I don't believe in the movie, not because I think that it's not done very well. It's done very well. And you know, all my friends, they've already watched it. And you know, it, it got like to a level that I went, you know, like uh, before coronavirus, I went to clubs on Friday and people came to me in the middle of the club and told me, hey, can I hug you? I saw you on a Crossings movie and I, I, you're my soulmate. I believe in you. My family loves you everywhere where I went. I, it, I was like a celebrity. I, I can't explain you that everywhere. Uh, I, I can't mention even one place that I went in the first uh, six months that the movie was released that no one recognized me. Really, people were whispering next to me. People were uh, people took pictures with me. It was uh, it was crazy. It was insane. And you know, like uh, I commented on YouTube, on the you know on the movie on YouTube, and three hundred people liked my comment. And I just wrote a simple thing like uh, "Thank you for the comments" and "Thank you for the love." I didn't write anything special, and there were so many likes. Uh, so it's something that I'm not used to. It's something that I'm not used to. Um, but it's a good experience because I got a lot of love and hugs and support and empathy from uh, people that I don't even know. People who just like so much character and told I, I want to be like her. People sent me messages on Instagram, Facebook. People reached to me in many, many ways uh, and made me feel very special. They found themselves in me because... I think that's something that I did in the movie, not intentionally, but this is, you know, like my uh, agenda. I was very authentic. I'm not trying to fake. I'm not trying to show that I'm someone who I'm not. I'm, try I'm always trying to be myself. And if being myself is crying, is, is not liking the situation that I'm in right now, th this is me. I'm not going to fake. Uh, so I think that this is why many people, you know, like felt a connection to me because 
you know, training in the army, it doesn't matter if you're a combat soldier, like a fighter, and it doesn't matter if you're like uh, in a training of two weeks and then going to an office. It's like the same thing. The, the army is not an easy place. It takes your life. It, stop, it stops them for two or three years. It depends on if, if you're a boy or a girl. And you know, in Israel, you have to go to the army. There is no choice unless you, you have, you know, like a special uh, reasons to not go, but you have to go to the army and the army like tells you, okay, you know your life right now, we are gonna stop them. We are gonna tell you what to do. Your comfort zone, forget about it. Forget about it, forget about it. We're gonna take you out of your comfort zone. Uh, and, and watching the movie, watching myself in the movie, being out of the comfort zone for so many months, uh, I think that it's that's an experience that, you know, like, uh, it, it made me think a lot about uh, of the sentence, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Uh, because, <laughs> you know, uh, um, that's an experience that made me know sides of myself that I never really got to know, strengths of myself that I never really got to know. So uh, <laughs> it's hard for me to watch, but everyone watched it told me that like, I'm their hero and, uh, and they felt a big connection to me. So uh, the movie and taking part in the movie was a very, very huge experience to me. Um, about your second question, it remind me the, your second question so I can answer it. Uh... <laughs> yeah, and so what do you feel you've learned or what, like watching the film, going through this process of, of, of being filmed, yeah. and what did you learn about yourself, about the world? Um, okay. about the, our conflict um, with the Palestinians. Um... Oh. Uh, so as I told you before, I did not get to be a crossing fighter because of a physical problem that I have. I finished the training, but I uh, did not get to the checkpoints. But I was uh, in contact uh, in, on daily basis with my friends that did get to the checkpoints and did uh, serve there. Uh, and I can tell you that this is a changing life experience. Uh, most of them see the world now in a different way, maybe in a good way, maybe in a bad way. You know, like uh, a lot of people tell that they, that they are there for uh, 10 to 12 hours, but I heard about cases where they had to be there for like more than 20 hours because of uh, uh, plans that uh, changed, soldiers that couldn't come. It's very dynamic. It's not like something uh, that can't go wrong. It can go wrong. Um, before I went to the army and after I was in the army, my opinion hasn't changed. I think that everybody deserves to be loved. Everybody deserves to be treated equally. Um, and, and I mean by that to the soldiers in the crossing points and also uh, to the Palestinian people who get to the crossing points because in the end of the day, we all have the same goal. The, the fact that there are people who are uh, trying to, you know, like uh, terrorize things and ruin things, they are a small group. They are a group, but they are a small group. And this is why the crossings are there to stop that. But in the end of the day, we are all human beings. We are all here for the same, uh, the same purpose. Uh, and that's what I think. And being filmed, whoa, um, this is something, you know, uh, before the army, I was, um, uh, I, I was, how can I say it? I was learning uh, how to act for four years. I love the stage. I love uh, people paying attention to me. Uh, so it's not something new to me that all eyes are on me. Okay, this is my, uh, this is my character. You know, like uh, as the, as an only child, and uh, <laughs> I don't know. This is just who I am. Uh, but being filmed is something else, and seeing yourself on screen is something else, uh, and seeing on YouTube that more than half a million people watched you during this time is something else that I've never experienced before. So this is a life-changing experience, but in a good way. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> and you're definitely a natural, Rotem. So um, if you, you know, if you <laughs> want to go to then to Nissan Ativ or to Yom Levinstein or one of the Israeli acting schools, I, I think uh, you'll have a, a beautiful um, you know, a path ahead of you and totally amend to uh, your notion of saying that we're all, you know, human beings and that and, and how you kind of reflect to that. I, I'm, I'm totally with you, of course. And okay. Itzik and, and also Otem, but I want to start with Itzik. You know, you're, you use crossings and checkpoints almost interchangeably. And, and I'm wondering, um, 
is there a difference? Because a checkpoint is supposed to be something that that is 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 blocked, right? That stops things from from going in and out. And a crossing, ma'aval in Hebrew, is something that lets things go through it, and it represents something more more that has more flow in it. And so, I'm wondering if you could um, talk about that kind of semantic, the the words, and why do wor- words? We know words matter, right? And a lot of how we talk about uh, issues in Israel. And so I'm wondering your choice around it and did you have a choice and just your thoughts on that. And I think you're, you're muted, Itzik. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, ch- checkpoint, there are a few uh, film in Israel that the name of them uh, was the uh, checkpoint. One of them very success, you have Shamir uh, and You know, I'm not going to copy it. <laughs> uh, crossing, for me, it's double meaning also. Just because uh, I deal with the young people, you know, they, they move from the, uh, the young age to be, to be a person, to be, you know, take, uh, they, they carry guns, they, they did something, they, they left uh, the home of them, they... You know they do they they do something that uh, it's a big dream it's a, a, a big different uh, before uh, before they coming to the army so actually I'm I, I, I it, it wasn't easy for me to to go from the, the crossing because uh, um, um, it, it's it, uh, the history of the checkpoint that the uh, The army or the Israeli government stopped the Palestinian in the and checked them um, let's say that the most of the Palestinian people coming uh, most yeah I think most coming to work in Israel let's say that in only in Kalandia uh, 50,000 Palestinian coming to the To, to, the, to Jerusalem or all over Israel to coming to work. So, uh, so I, 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 it's, if, if, you, if you look at in this eye, you, you find that the, uh, this way is, um, is also crossing. Uh, I'm looking for a good name. I don't know if it, that's the best name, but uh, just because it's the, The double meaning of the young people crossing and the Palestinian uh, crossing so I, in the end uh, that's the that's the name I'm fascinating and yeah. I just want to remind our audience that if you if you want to start asking questions please by all means uh, ta- um, type them into the the chat and then um, we will call on you to, to share the, the question out loud. If you prefer not to be called on, you can let us know and, and I'll read out a more easy will um, read out your, your question. I saw, I saw a good question in the chat. You want me, somebody ask, uh, why the Israeli By soldiers- By all means. Yeah, yeah, I'm going for it. Why the Israeli soldiers don't speak Arabic? So I ask uh, 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 the, the people in, uh, in, in the checkpoint of Mexico, In uh, Tijuana, they speaking uh, Spanish, come on. That's the, that's the first one. The second, they are uh, Drusen, uh, uh, not soldiers, but it is a private uh, security that the uh, Israel government uh, hired them to be there uh, and, and they help a lot to be in touch. What I saw when I find that a lot of Palestinian people speaking Hebrew just because they are coming to Israel coming and go by the way there are a lot of doctors who are coming from uh, Ramallah from uh, uh, Bethlehem doctors who are working in, uh, in Jerusalem hospital even in Tel Aviv so most of them are speaking uh, Hebrew. And in the end, I think that uh, the, the, body lang- the body language, if you deal with the body language, it, that's the, the, you, can, you can do it. If the two sides, 
the two sides always, what I find that the two sides, the soldiers and the Palestinian want, want to come in the end of the day in peace, in quiet. They don't look in, nobody looking for a, for a mess, for a, I don't know, Balagan or something. I want to ask you to on, on that. Um, you, you, you kind of alluded to it in, in, our, in, our, in the first question and um, in your first answer, but the choice to really highlight almost only the, the soldiers and really go in depth into their lives without bringing kind of the voice of the, of the people who are going through the crossings. And in your previous, in previous film in Megiddo, you, you do kind of, you know, you do interview both sides, both the, uh, the, the prisoners and the correctional facility officers. Um, and this time it's really focused only on the soldiers. We kind of hear from one Palestinian going through the, the, the checkpoint and that he's late for work and it's hard for him, but like a more in-depth understanding of who these people are, like how's this experience for them. Um, that, that, that's definitely a choice. And, and I would love to hear a little more about, yeah. about it. I, I thought in Megiddo, uh, it's, um, I think, um, what, what I what what might take take me in Megiddo to go to, for the two sides that both of them are in the jail both of them uh, and I even have uh, some statistic about the about the jailers that uh, in Israel in uh, the Israeli jailers in a security prison they are die after uh, the statistics show, they'll die after uh, 45 years old. That's the, the statistic, which is, uh, you know, no, but let's say that um, I try to find some Palestinians that they will be, that they will be also characters and they give, uh, you know, to, be, to, to do it complicated, to do it in a, um, um, it was hard. It was very hard. I tried to to uh, 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 to give some help from the uh, some Palestinian uh, director. It wasn't go go because the Palestinian, you know, they are only crossing. They are not staying. So the story have to be there. You can't go. He's going to work. He's going home. So I find that uh, I'm looking for to be all the time in the crossing, to see the stretch there, to see the, how it's, uh, how is the weather, it's cold, it's warm. And there, if there are some attack, so I, I have to be there. So I find that the soldier, the Israeli soldiers, uh, the story will be about uh, the Israeli soldiers. I try to do it the complicated. Actually, I'm looking for always even in my in, in my a new uh, film now in my new project to do it complicated uh, that's that's good for you <laughs> absolutely whatever you feel like sharing is okay. is great itik really okay. and i want to i have a question that came in through the chat and also i also kind of jotted it down prior and and, and which is how is the film um, being received in israel um, because as I know Israel, uh, I'm sure people on the right are criticizing it and people mm. on the left are criticizing it and kind of, and, or people in general love it. I, I really have no idea how people are receiving it. So I would love to hear actually, if to start with Rotem and hear what's your reaction. You said a bit about people wanted to take selfies with you and, you know, giving L you all this love. In, in a, okay, I got it. In, a, in a Channel 11 okay. now, they have a VOD. So uh, crossing or Marvarim in Hebrew, there are almost 2 million views in the VOD. Wow. 2 million views, only VOD, which means you want to see a crossing, you, you're going to your computer and you're looking for, a, and there are three parts, three parts, part one, two, three. You, you watch the, uh, the one film, that I, the single that I made. Uh, uh, they don't have any documentary project like that. But as you said, the, the left and the right. So uh, on, the, on the left side, uh, uh, 
particularly in the generalists, they don't like it. Why? Where is the Palestinian? You forgot the Palestinian back. And uh, uh, else, yeah, I think I, I find that, that uh, people who are looking in a very short perspective and they don't look even in the, uh, you know, the Israeli uh, soldiers, most of them, let's say that also uh, from the left side, they did, they did the job that uh, every, every young people have to do three years or two years for the, for the, uh, for the girls. And I find that it's very, uh, let's say that the most generalist in, uh, in, uh, in the Israel uh, don't like it at all. Uh, I, the, 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 the premiere of this film was in a Haifa festival. Uh, and uh, I have a very good uh, opinion from there. <clears throat> um, but two, two million views, which is uh, fantastic. Really Absolutely. impressive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Really is. impressive. What well, I would love to hear from you a, a bit more. Um, how is the film received? Um... Uh, okay, so um, one thing I can say is that like, um, how, can I, how can I explain it? Put eight people in one room, you'll get nine opinions. As uh, everyone say, you know, uh, here in Israel, because of the situation, because of the intense situation that we have here, many people have many different opinions about that movie because it takes like a subject which is, I think this is the most complicated thing you can, you can talk about with an Israeli person, the Israeli-Palestinian uh, conflict. This is something that uh, a solution was not found for it for like years and years and years. You know, I'm only 21 years old, but this is something that I hear about from my grandparents. And this is a problem that hasn't, the solution for it hasn't been discovered yet. I don't think it will ever be discovered because it's so complicated, okay? This is my opinion because uh, there are so many sides to the story. So uh, a solution, a perfect solution, it's something that is so hard to find. So, you know, when people spoke with me about the movie, uh, they were like confused. They were like, uh, how is it to serve them? How is it uh, to deal with the Palestinians every day? Because, you know, like uh, the crossings are a very rough situation for both sides, also the soldiers and also the Palestinian people. This is a very, very, you know, like, um, how can I explain it? I saw my friends there, they were uh, uh, telling me about the experiences there. It's like a very, very, very complicated situation because you have like uh, daily um, struggles that you have to deal with. If to let someone go through, you know what, like, you have to, you know, like um, put your emotion on the side and use only your brain when you're there. And, and this is something that is, um, I think it's impossible almost impossible for a human being. Not all human beings can like take their emotion, put it on the side and focus only on doing their job. Because, uh, you know, I don't know uh, if you remember for the movie, there was a time when I uh, went with one of the soldiers to the side uh, on the training and I told him like, uh, what do I do if I'm in the crossing? And an old poor lady comes to me and tells me, uh, listen, I forgot, uh, you know, like uh, my documents at home, I don't have them with me. I really need to get to work. I really need to come to Israel. And I, I have to tell her, I can't let you in. You don't have the papers that you need to show me. I can't do that. And you know, like she's a poor lady. I'm pretty sure that she's not a terrorist, but my job, but the rules in my job tell me you can't let her in. And it doesn't matter if I see her every day. It doesn't matter if I know that she gets in every day because maybe the, the paper she had yesterday is not valid for today. This is a job that you have to separate your uh, emotion from, from what you're thinking. You have to do your job just like a robot. This is the job. So it's hard for both sides. And remember that the soldiers that are in the crossings are there for like more than 10 to 12 hours. And how focused can you be for so many hours? We are not robots. Soldiers are not robots. It's a rough work for both sides, believe me. Like, uh, as I told you, I did not serve there, unfortunately, but I heard it from my friends. It's not an easy situation to both of the sides. Um, 
So, uh, but, but I have to tell you that the movie in Israel was accepted very well and they got very, very good, you know, like uh, comments from people uh, who told me that they really liked it and they think that it shows a really good point of view uh, on the situation because this is a situation, as I told you, a very complicated situation. When you live here in Israel, it's like it, there is a very, very big tense when you start speaking about the conversation. Those are endless conversations that can be done about the Israeli-Palestinian uh, conflict. Uh, but people here really liked it. And as Itzik said, uh, two, million view, uh, two million views don't lie. <laughs> it's like, it's popular. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Rotem. Thank you. Um, I think um, I'm going to ask Itzi to um, start the Q&A session. And I want to really thank you both, Itzrak and, and, and Rotem. It's such a pleasure to speaking with you and hearing your, your, your opinions and, and views um, uh, regarding this film. Um, and yeah, I'll pass it over to Izzy. So we're going to take some questions from the audience. Um, we're going to start. Our first question is from Dina, and then I'll ask a question. Dina, your mic's on. Dina, can you hear? Yeah. Yes. Hi. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you so much for this amazing movie. I, I just wanted to say I was at Kalandia with Maxon Watch um, to understand how it works. And it was by far one of the most awful experiences of my life. So I could very much identify with the soldiers crying when they're there. It's such a shock to the system when you're there. Um, the, the film to me was incredibly fascinating and educational because being there, I always wondered what soldiers were feeling, what were they going through, what was happening. I, I was talking to the Palestinians and I could understand what it was like to feel trapped in this cage and these bars that were so sh shocking. Um, but it also, and by the way, it made me, if this is possible, it made me want peace even more because there's no way that 18 year old soldiers should be doing this job like this. It's not good for Israelis, it's not good for Palestinians. But my, the, my question is that, you know, as soon as I was there or I left there, I was constantly thinking like, is there a better, given the terrible situation, is there a better way to do this? It just creates so much humiliation for Palestinians. I would think that's not a great thing for Israelis or for Palestinians. I just was wondering, Itzik, if you, because you spent so much time, did you think about whether there could be a better way to do this? And Rotem, I'd love to hear your opinion on this too. Okay, uh, so we'll let Itzik talk and I'll speak after him. <laughs> uh, I don't think it's, uh, you know, um, uh, you can find it uh, in new patent uh, or new exit. Uh, and, and, and uh, you know, just like that, people go from uh, and no crossing, no checkpoints. The only way is, uh, you know, to bring some peace uh, in our skies, in our land. Uh, that's the only way, I think. But I don't think it will happen. I, I, I have uh, another opinion to think that I thought what I saw in the end of uh, in the in the in the end of the shooting that the soldiers. Most of the soldiers changing uh, the opinion about uh, about the political uh, side, uh, which is very happy for me to see that uh, they behave nice to the Palestinians. They understand the situation. Um, um, they don't use uh, in a in a, a louding voice, uh, which is uh, um, for me. You know, I'm looking for dramatic situation. So uh, uh, it, it, there are a lot of there, there are many days that I'm coming to shooting there, and I'm looking for dramatic things, and everything is quiet. So uh, I find that uh, in the in the last few months uh, it was very quiet there. Uh, I, I I have to, I have to say that in the Ramadan holidays. That's a big mess. That's, uh, um, let's say that in uh, four or five hours, 
more than uh, 50,000 people go to El Aqsa. Uh, and it's very, in, uh, actually it's in the summer, it's very warm there. I, 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 actually in Kalandia, uh, they build a, a, new, um, a new lobby, a new, and it, it's uh, with air condition. I've been there a uh, few months ago. Rotem, have you been in Kalandia? In the... Of course, when we were on the tour with, uh, in the training, oh. yeah. So um, uh, Kalandia now, it's, you know, it's like, uh, like, like uh, our, uh, um, uh, uh, our airport. JFK, you come and you see the big, uh, big hall with air condition. Uh, everything is in a, they, they have a special card. It's not like in the old days. Probably if I will come, if I will come to uh, shoot in these days at uh, uh, Kalandia, it will be different, not interesting <laughs> anymore. So I'm a little bit lucky, but uh, now it's easier for them. Okay. Well, Tim, what do you, well, Tim, what do you think? Is there a better way to do this? Um... Okay, first of all, I have to say the soldiers are not there alone, okay? These are not only soldiers in the crossings. There are also uh, sometimes police officers, sometimes people from, uh, uh, not the, the, it's not a police in Israel, we call it Magav. It's like a unit in the army that's also, uh, that also belongs to the police. Uh, the soldiers are not there alone. They are, you know, like uh, the first thing that the Palestinian people see, but they are not there alone. They're not doing the job by themselves. Um, maybe there is a better way to do this, uh, but I can't really think of a way. Uh, but I can also say that I think that letting soldiers do that job is also good because I think that soldiers have the empathy. Soldiers can, you know, like when they experience it on a daily basis, they can develop an empathy to those, to those people. Because in the end of the day, the soldiers are people, the Palestinian people are people. Uh, and I think maybe there is a better way to do that job. But I think that the way it's done now, it's done now is also good. Uh, th this is my opinion about it. <laughs> Itamar, I saw as a question about uh, how, how do I get the clearance from the government? You want me to give some uh, answer sure. about it? Sure, share. Yeah? The, so the clearance are not coming from the government. The clearance to be there coming from the army. But in the army, you have to go uh, for a... a if you, uh, it's it's a it's a long story uh, bureaucratic uh, to get the access from uh, to get the clearance for them, but in the end it's gone. It, 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 I'm not I'm not uh, I, I'm not waiting for Bibi that he let me to be in the Kalandia. I have to go to the army to the spokesman and things like that. And how did the army respond to the film? They, did they censor it? Did they say this can't go in? Did they have to look at it? At the beginning, they love it. But it took, a, it took a two weeks, and then they say, we don't like it at all. I don't know if you remember them. There are some sergeant in the, in the, uh, in the fifth minute, at the beginning of the film, that he shout, uh, he shout uh, on the soldiers, what you are doing, and war, and then, then it's a big, very big mess. And the army didn't like it, like it at all. Even the, the Ramatkal, the Aviv Kohavi, I just uh, heard that uh, they don't like it at all. Nice. Uh, but okay, I'm not working for the army. Nobody tell me that I'm working for the army. All right, I want to take a question from someone else. I want to take a question from David. David, you ready to go? David, you're on the air. Okay, David, if uh, we can't hear you, I have... Um... Oh, I'm sorry, I, I could not unmute myself. I just, I just did. Um, before I ask my question, I, I just have to say to... Carol Zabor, you deserve the Nobel Prize, gold medal, Prosius for Ale, year after year. I, it's just, it's, it's beyond, 
it's beyond anything. Thank you and thank God for you. Now for Rotem, a question, my question is, does the whole experience for the soldiers, I hate to say it for kids, tend to have a impact on their political views? Does it turn them from left to right or vice versa? Does it have a permanent corrupting impact on their outlook, on their morality, on their sense of decency? Is it, or is it just two years and it comes and goes and, and that's the end of it? <laughs> okay, uh, that's a very interesting question. I have to say that it's very, you know, like it depends on the soldier itself. There are some soldiers that came from their houses with uh, different opinions uh, that from their perspective, no one can change. There are those soldiers. There are soldiers that came with an opinion that uh, they thought that can be changed. Um, and I can tell you that I, that I had friends that uh, served there, uh, that their political uh, side changed during their military service from left to right and from right to left. Uh, it's like, um, it's something that, it, that can happen both ways. Uh, I can tell you that, that uh, me, myself, I came with a belief from home uh, that uh, um, I, I'm kind of in the center, not in the right, not in the left. Uh, and I believe uh, just that we are all human beings. We all should be treated equally and nothing in the military service changed it because uh, I think that this is the belief I should have had uh, when I was there. So, uh, yeah, it happens to a few soldiers that their uh, political uh, side changes. Um, yes, uh, also from right to left or from uh, left to right. Um, let me ask a question that I think relates to that. It's a question from uh, one of our audience members who did not want to ask it live. Um, but it was mentioned that some kids served in hard army. Is the assignment at checkpoints considered... I don't want to say less. Well, it says less valued. Is is the is it uh, is being in the set in the checkpoints considered hard army? Um, how is it uh, seen? Uh, okay, so uh, oh, this is a beautiful question. You know, like uh, it depends on uh, where you look from it and where you serve. I can tell you that uh, uh, most of the people that serve as the fighters in the army most of the time uh, don't really value the crossing fighters. Uh, because they they tell that their job is harder, they do harder stuff, and sometimes it's true because the crossing fighters uh, sometimes are only in the crossings, and you know, like other fighters are really like in Gaza and places like that, so it can be physically a harder job. Uh, but I can say that mentally, it's something else. You know, mentally, it's uh, something that should be way more valued. And, you know, every time someone looked at me and uh, told me something uh, about uh, being, uh, you know, in the military police, I was not afraid to have an argument with them and tell them that we should be more valued. Uh, so, yeah, it happens. But I can really say in the end that we are all one army. We are all there for the same purpose and we all appreciate each other. And sometimes uh, other soldiers don't know what the part of other soldiers is. And once it's explained, um, they appreciate you more. So uh, it happens, but uh, not a lot of times. It can be solved only by speaking and uh, proving things. As a final question, I'm going to put two questions together from um, people in the audience. One is, is there any Palestinian representatives at these checkpoints? And two, have Palestinians seen these, this film and have there been reactions from Palestinians? Oh, I think this is a good question for Itzik. I think he, he, he can answer you better. Itzik, unmute yourself. <laughs> Itzik, you're muted. Itzik, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, the, the, the answer is no. The Palestinian, I don't know any Palestinian who watched this film. Uh, I have to ask my distributor uh, if she tried to to give to some some uh, Palestinian Arabic or something. Uh, but as I as I know, uh, the the answer is no. I will be happy if it's if if I if I heard some if I have some uh, comment from this side. Uh, for sure, yes. As as a, yeah. I I saw I saw uh, if 
if uh, something is changed, uh, if the if the film makes some change. Yep. So uh, I don't know what them probably know better than me after the scene of the sergeant who shout on you in the the first day. So the condition in the negative base was changed uh, upside down just because Rotem, you you you've been there. Can can you give some? Yeah. So that's the film made. And I'm, <laughs> and I'm always ask why they are shooting. Please have a conversation. Talk to each other. Why to shoot? Why it's so? Rotem, you be, you have been there. Please. Um, so uh, I have to say uh, that after the scene with the surgeon, you know, like, as I said, I served in the military police, uh, uh, the school of military police where I was trained. And I can say that after the movie was released, uh, after people seen the scene with the, uh, with the surgeon, a lot of things changed in the military police um, school in the, in the army. Uh, it was kind of a shock. Uh, people did not like to see that. Um, it was also not a very nice experience, I can say. You know, like when you look back, it's a bit funny because it looks like a theater show. You know, it's like something that really wouldn't happen to you in reality, that someone takes you in the dark, uh, lets you stand there and shouts at you like, like you're in jail. It's not something that happens in reality. It's like a big show. Um, so a lot of things changed and uh, the way that the military police treated their soldiers has really changed. Uh, but I have to say that before the movie, after the movie, uh, while filming the movie, I don't know if it was seen, but uh, the commanders in the military police trains uh, treat very well their soldiers. The beginning is a bit, uh, is a bit frightening, I admit. Uh, but this is the method because the military police is not an easy place to be in. So uh, I think that they're making the soldiers get used to, you know, like uh, being spoken in a very brutal way so they can, you know, like get stronger. And as I said uh, earlier, what doesn't kill you makes it stronger, you know, like to develop a character. I think that this is their method. This is why they're doing it. Um, maybe it's not the right method, but it's not being used anymore anyway. <laughs> Um, thank you. I want to. I want to thank you all. First of all, I want to mention as a counterpoint to this film, we have a, a short film called The Present, which I highly recommend um, seeing. And uh, we're going to have a conversation with the filmmakers tomorrow. Um, I want to give the. I want to give a big thank you to Itamar from the New Israel Fund for moderating this conversation. Of course, to Itzik and Rotem for being a part. Um, um, but before we go to breakout sessions, I want to give the final word to uh, Carol Zabar, the founder of the festival. Um, Yitzik, I'll start with you. When you first started filming Rotem, did you feel as I think I would have if I were making this film, Yeshli Seret, I have a film. Because <laughs> this is a girl who inhabits her space. Your eyes are never off of her. And this is, I think, an inborn thing. Thank so you. when she said she studied theater, et cetera, Keep going because this is going, you're going to be very successful because then she is the tie from Alephata. When you're watching this movie, she's the thread that connects this together and makes it human because it's a very inhuman movie, but she makes it human as Mazalto. Thank you. Thank you, Otem. You are great. I agree, Carol. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>